animator versus the machine. Round 10. Begin. All right. On today's podcast, we have a very special guest. But before we get to that, I would like to explain how we got here. So we got here because a friend of mine sent me an article from Cartoon Brew talking about two tech bros that were trying to make a one-man studio by like uh, by using technology to make a what basically what I said a one-man studio. But in that article, they talked about companies that are looking to use AI to make storyboards. So I found the I found their webpage emailed them, and surprise, surprise, I got an email back. So today, we're talking to Zed from Final. Hey, Zed. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so the people that don't know what I'm talking about, what is your product, and what is it? Yeah, so basically, it's an AI solution um, to create a storyboard from a movie script or any kind of script. Okay. Uh, and so how does how does it do this? Like. How do you work this? Is it like a stable diffusion? You typed in prompts or is it like a clicking functions? Like how does it work? So um, we've built, uh, so it's a, it's a software as a service uh, platform. It's uh, fully in, in, in your browser. And um, how it actually works is um, if you have, let's say you have a movie script from a, for, for a movie and um, you, just, you just wrote the script. And um, you want uh, you need some financing financing for it, or you want to prepare your team. Maybe you already have your team, but you you are just in the pre production phase of your project, so um, you are planning on shooting. And um, you just take your script as it is. You don't need any markers or anything at all. You just take your script as it is, and then upload it to our tool. And our tool will automatically detect all the scenes inside your script. And inside each scene, all the shots inside, um, yeah, inside each scene, all the shots. And then it will um, generate for each shot inside your scenes, it will generate a custom uh, uh, image by um, a predefined art style. And then just give you export functions for um, both the uh, shot list or, and also storyboard. And um, yeah, you can just print both um, or download it to um, just refine um, your storyboards even further. Like we have some customers uh, who are doing this already, just um, uh, exporting the plain images and then importing them into um, Photoshop or anything, um, uh, which software just um, yeah image manipulation software they're working with to edit these further and. Um, yeah, and then um, just have a finished storyboard and the shot list. Okay. So then it sounds like this is for people that are independent filmmakers and don't have the excess cash to hire a storyboard. Is that correct? A storyboard artist story, I meant to say. So who is this for and yeah. who is this for? So we the, the idea for Storyboard AI emerged from um, the need of creating storyboards for smaller projects. So we ourselves, um, so we are a film production company called Final in, um, in Germany, Dortmund. And um, we um, are working with mainly um, producing commercial stuff, but also some feature films. We already um, did, I think, three or four um, uh, feature films in oh, the cool. last years. And um, but most of the stuff we are doing is commercials, and um, so some of our clients um, have a bigger budget and some have a smaller budget, and especially the uh, clients with smaller budgets, um, we don't have the capacity to um, uh, to create storyboards for each of these projects. So for each project, we obviously have a shot list because we need that for pre-production. But um, a storyboard, which is a very useful tool um, on set um, and also in the pre-production phase. We don't have the time uh, and or the money to create storyboards. So for these smaller projects, we thought, hey, it would be cool to use AI to create storyboards for these projects as well. And yeah, that's basically where the idea came from. And then we thought, yeah, it's helpful for us. We are a film production company, but maybe it's also helpful for others. So um, we started planning this um, whole thing out and um, yeah, launched like end of august this year oh cool uh so i'm gonna circle back to how it works i just i forgot a question <laughs> um yeah sure 
so you said it, it reads your script and analyzes it and gives you uh, for how is it analyzing your script like how's it doing that so there's happening some magic <laughs> and it <laughs> magically uh, detects all the seeds no so what we're using is um <clears throat> we are actually using um we don't have the capacity as a film production company so we don't have a big it team or whatever so we are using um accessible and open um or mostly open um, um uh, software and tools uh, which are available for like everyone and um fine-tuning these models and fine-tuning these um, programs um to um to do what we are doing essentially and yeah uh, text uh, analytics um for let's say if you have a movie script which you upload we have um since we are a film production company ourselves, we have a b bunch of data on um, movie scripts ourselves and also um, short lists, and we know how these are structured and um, uh, what what um, um, what specifics um, there are, let's say, in a short list. And we just train these models on our own material um, to just um, yeah detect scenes and shots better. Okay, so I can hear. <laughs> The pitchforks behind me and the animation community behind me right now. And when I heard when he said it's you can choose styles, how is it how is it gathering those different styles? I'm just curious about that. Like how is it collecting what it deems as a style? Do you do you understand? Mm -hmm. So um we are using some uh, so we, we, we thought it would be useful um, of fine-tuning different styles with our own okay. stuff, but um, we, um, so we are a film production company, but we don't have as many um, storyboard artists um, mm -hmm. in our company and different styles, etc. So what we're basically using is um, open source um, software for image generation and um, just uh, predefining these prompts so they... Um, so they um so we can expect the the um, outcome to be like um, the, the the things we want so we don't have just one specific style which would be like one storyboards artist style but we have different styles which we uh, predefined and um yeah and are using as um yeah standards in our tool okay does this answer your question yeah i think so yeah it sounds i yeah okay. i can piece it together um so what are some limitations of the software right now? Because everything always gets updated in patches and, you know, it gets better as it goes. So what are the limitations as of right now? Yeah, so that's that's an interesting question um, because when we started um, visualizing how this cool tool um, could look uh, in, the, in the very beginning, um, we already at the research um, step of this project, we realized that we will have um, some... Um, some setbacks and some problems uh, with this whole project. But the thinking behind all of what we've done until now and also in the future um, will, was and will be um, that AI technology doesn't seem to get any worse. So it gets better from day to day, from week to week, from month to month. And we are always trying to update our tool, but um, um, so some common issues we actually do have right now are, for example, um, consistency in faces. So mm -hmm. this is a, this is like um, uh, it's not unsolvable, but uh, sure. it's a very um, it's a very tricky thing to accomplish. So we we try to um, uh, predefine um, some faces and then just replicate these faces with um, detailed descriptions of how the face looks, etc. But also um, there are uh, different approaches to this. So we could one approach would be we can. Um, just describe in text form what the face looks like or what we could do is just upload the face but then the problem is we need different angles of this of this face to train or fine-tune our um, ai model um, to just recreate this face and yeah these are so for example this is a um, this is a complicated uh, problem <laughs> which we are facing right now okay yeah because i was gonna say when i looked at the demo it, like i saw there was like a little there was like a little drop bar menu where it was like close shot medium shot extreme far shot but i didn't see any for like angles so i guess you would have to type that in it had to be in your script being like i want a low angle and then i guess you would have to write close up for it to scan properly and give you like an approximation is that correct 
Yeah, so actually we, we do have the, um, the, the, the option to select that. Okay. Uh, I think one is a perspective and the other is shot size. And um, the shot size, you can just select um, a close up, medium shot, um, full angle or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, with perspective, you can, for example, choose ground shot or high angle shot or bird's eye view or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, you can just combine these things, but you could also write it directly into the description. So everything will be, so we have a, a table, a shortlist table, and um, everything will be pre-filled while generating um, the shortlist. So we are analyzing the uploaded um, screenplay uh, or script. And then um, the whole thing gets just pre-filled. And you as a filmmaker, let's say, you want to um, change different things. You want a medium shot instead of a close-up. You can just go into these all of these cells. You can, um, you can uh, see in the tool or the website. You can go into all of these cells and just um, customize like, like you want. Yeah. Interesting. So are there other competitors out there that are doing similar things to you, what you guys are doing? Or are you guys the only game in town right now? So when we started research on this whole thing, we mm. were the first ones, okay. uh, which, um, so the, it, I, I think at that time, I can imagine that some others were, were experimenting with that as well, but nothing public. Mm. Um, so, uh, we, we didn't find, could, we couldn't find anything on the internet at all. And we did um, quite a lot of research on this. And, um, so right now there are some competitors, um, from a different comp, I think there are three or four. Four or need two, two, two or three um, companies um, that are doing similar things, but all with a different approach. Okay. So, um, so one approach is um, so with the one tool um, you have, uh, um, and we also test all these products, etc., just to um, make sure that we have the best uh, or we build the best uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, one of these tools, uh, to, to give you an example, what the differences between these tools are, um, one of the tools, um, you can't upload anything um, uh, at, uh, at the start of a project, but you just have to um, like write an idea uh, into a text box. But let's say you have an idea for a short film or something, you just write your idea in there. It generates automatically your script and then it generates your storyboard. Um, what we are doing is a different approach. So our approach is more like for professional film productions, which already have a screenplay, or for professional screenwriters, which already have a screenplay. And we have this um, step between. So between idea and um, final storyboard, we have the step of um, you don't, you, you, if you don't only have the idea, but also already have a um, finished script or, scor story, uh, or uh, script or screenplay, you can just take that, upload that, we analyze all the scenes and shots, and then we generate the storyboard. So that's something um, that um, none of our competitors um, are handling right now. Right now? So yeah, I was, yeah. You answered my question. I was like, what makes yours stand out? And you already did it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, but so, so, some things, um, if, for example, there are also some competitors who, who have a, a completely different approach. Like, um, uh, I can't recall their name right now, but there, um, I think it's closed, so you can't even log in or anything on their website. But you, you just have to contact them. And what they're doing is, um, they take <clears throat> material from your own storyboard artist and then train. Uh, an image model on that material for you so you can just upload your own scripts for the next project and then get the same results or similar results as your storyboard artist was so that's a completely different approach yeah interesting okay now to get to the nitty-gritty as i like to call it um <laughs> it, it's no that's secret there is a lot of contention between artists and like AI models that are being created because like a lot of AI models are sampling artists' work and just taking what their style is considered. Like, and then there's, and there's companies out there that are quote unquote helping artists. Like, uh, there's that glaze app that like disrupts AIs from looking at, uh, like from using your work or, uh, there's a new one, a uh, nightshade where it like set quote unquote poisons the artwork so that it, when you, you can't sample it. So if you're like, Oh, there's a dog. And then what Nightshade does, it, it like it corrupts the file so that it like it doesn't produce a dog. It produces like cats or porcupines. So it doesn't do prompts properly. 
besides that, um, what do you think are what do you think the social and a um, moral responsibilities should be towards? Should, is it, should the companies that are making these AI softwares think about these things, or is it uh, is the onus on the user that are using these products? What are your opinions? Yeah, so that's a very um, difficult question to answer. And um, I can just um, answer from my own perspective sure. on this whole topic. So um, I, I, I developed Storyboard AI, but actually um, we didn't develop a, a whole model ourselves. So we don't have much training or we don't have, uh, I think we we don't have any uh, training material from outside our company, okay. um, but we, we just use some things to test, but we never use something to actually train. Right. And we're using available, mostly open source software to generate the images we are using. And um, the uh, so I think it's a very important topic to, um, to look at what data sets are these AI models trained on. And are these artists, which uh, artworks were used to train these models, are they uh, compensated um, or are they even recognized or are they even, um, I don't know, uh, are they even, do, do, do we know who, who they are or is, just, is it just an anonymous bubble of data um, we, we can't, where we can't tell um, what artworks from which artists were used. So that's a very difficult um, thing to answer, in my opinion. And I think the best option, so let's say it's a perfect world and um, we can just um, create something beautiful. And I think the best way to do something like this would be um, give artists the opportunity to opt in with their own material, like with their own photography and with their own text and with their own everything to opt in into AI models, pay them for using their data to train these models and, um, and, then, uh, and then use that. And I think that would be the, the cleanest option um, we would have. Uh, to, to, to solve this properly uh, because these artists are, uh, have opted in or would have opted in. And um, some companies are already um, doing some, th some things like that. For example, I think it was uh, Shutterstock, um, who, who is, um, uh, which is um, there like um, letting their artists um, op opting in into um, training their own AI models. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's a really great way um, to, to solve this issue. But um, since this is a very new technology where many people don't know how the technology actually works, um, it's very difficult to, um, to negotiate that, I think. Yeah. And for some, for some models that are already um, like um, openly, like mid journey or stable diffusion or dolly or anything, um, I'm not sure if we know what data sets are these models actually tr are trained on and it's very hard to, um, to to get back to the source so how do we find out if these models were trained on some artists works with who doesn't wanted that and um, i think that's a really difficult question i don't know how we can solve this now right. but i think if if we were to train a new ai model a good way would be to just let artists opt in with their material and just pay them right like i, I totally agree with you because like i've seen people like artists being like oh this ai ripped off my work and i'm like and i like i look at the comparative images i'm like oh it looks similar but i've also done like you know everyone's done stable diffusion or dolly or whatever they fool around with it when it generates something you can't really you don't really tell what it is or like you can't tell what style it is you're like oh okay Unless you're like very specifically like, I want Jack Kirby, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, now you're being very specific in that. But like, if it's just general stuff, it's hard to tell sometimes where the style is coming from. I, yeah, I totally agree. But yeah, your idea of, yeah, like I think that is the best approach. Whereas like if you're doing, if you're generating an AI model, you produce all your artwork in-house and let the AI base it off of that or pay, and paying artists and all that. But this will be my wrap-up question. <laughs> Very short interview. It's all good. Um, I know you're busy. So AI, to me, is kind of like Mary, she Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where it's like this doctor creates this 
impossible technology and then once it's out in the world he's like struggles to put it back like to fix it when he can't because it's it's out there so like like there's no way ai is stopping it's just gonna like this version of ai generative ai and deep learning is gonna stop it's just gonna keep going so how can we ensure that the introduction of this technology enhances creative process rather than restricts it so how do we stop it from you know everything looking exactly the same versus you know the creative freedom of like everyone has a different style or different way of doing things versus an ai was like this is the way we're doing everything looks the same um i think it's not so much a question of um can we uh, pre prevent ai from producing the same image or mm -hmm. the same style all the time so make it deterministic or or something i think that's not the, the question we should be uh, asking, but I think the question we should be asking is more like, um, can we defend ourselves and our um, artistic voices against AI um, to, um, to, to, to stand over this? So, so to, to, to be able to prevent our human aspect inside all of our artistic strife. And I think, um, so what AI can can do right now, like um, uh, image generation, but also text generation, is you can. Um, it, it doesn't have to be all the same. So I I, I think um, it was um, t today morning. I um, I was on the stable so stable diffusion, the company stability AI um, uh, developed. Um, I think it's called stable music or something, where you can just generate music. And it's it's pretty cool. They are cooperating with uh, like a music uh, platform. And then I was thinking about um, hmm, okay, but uh, if two people are giving a, a, a music prompt for to generate a music a track um, if, uh, and uh, entering the same prompt, will it be similar? And then in the FAQ and um, uh, we've also tried some things. Um, it it uh, they answer it as um, so every time you try to regenerate a, a track, um, even though the prompt is the same, the output output will something different. And it also, if you listen to it, it's totally different. And um, it's the same style and it's um, it's similar in a sense, but it's uh, totally different. So let's say if you just open chat GPT and uh, write something um, inside chat GPT, but if, or even use the open AI API where you can um, adjust the temperature um, for, uh, for, determinist, for deterministic or non-deterministic. And you can just uh, vary um, between different outputs of these models where um, totally different uh, things um, can, can happen. So for example, um, if you want a totally a creative output, you can get that. And if you want a totally like um, fact-based and logical output, you can get that as well. And um, these are totally different outputs. And I think, <clears throat> um, so you can, so I don't think we are heading into a future where everything will look the same or will be the same or similar, but I think we will have indefinitely different niches and aspects and everything of everything and uh, i think that's beautiful i think that's a beautiful thing to have even um to be able to even catch some nuances in in in, in speech for example um or also an image generation just um just um uh, just um specifying tiny details even in images to be able to capture these in, in text and in images and also in music and everything else um, i think that's beautiful and i think that's um enhancing um human creativeness in a way that's um, that, 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 that that was not possible before so um, if i as a non-artist person um, want to wanted to um, generate an image i can just do that and um and get inspired by these art works uh, that the ai creates and like I said, I think the, the more important question is not if everything will be the same, but the more important question will be, um, will be as a human or as, as the human species will be, um, will be, will we be, be able to prevent AI from kind of taking away our jobs and, um, will there be any 
um, force to let us be creative anymore. So let's say if if I'm if I'm <clears throat> if I'm um, uh, going to work and, and and I'm I'm creative at my job, then that's because I I need a job and I go to the job and I um, and I need to do some works to to get paid. But um, if that's not a thing anymore, um, will be will we as humans be um, able to um, be still creative? Um, even though, let's say, we don't have to be creative for our job or for 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 our payments or whatever. And I think that's the more um, important question here: Will we be able to um, still prevent be, AI from? The, yeah, still be creative yeah. at the end of the day. Like it's like yeah, people yeah. say it's ingrained into us, right? Like we're always there to still tell stories and express ourselves. But if I don't know, there's part of me is like, yeah, AI can do it all. But part of me is also like, AI democratizes art right it allows everyone to do it it's no longer like an elite class of people who are like oh you either have talent or you trained a lot of hours or both usually it's both and now it's like oh no everyone can do it like if you have this vision in your head of like oh i want this cool wizard doing you know boo boo poom shoom powers or whatever it's like you can do that and then like it's it's kind of beautiful but i also understand like people like myself who are in the you know the art industry where it's like, oh, that's kind of scary because it's like, oh, now everyone can do it. Why do I need, like, why do they need to hire people like myself if everyone can do it? But yeah, 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 it's interesting. I, I think the, the beautiful t t thing about this, so um, you, you you put it in words uh, very, very good, I think. <laughs> um, it, democrat it, democrat it democratizes um, like everything we do or content creation as, as a general mm -hmm. um, thing, but also um, like going through emails or um, something yeah. like the, the, these are things. Um, so go going through it fast, at least. Um, I think these are so. Uh, I'm a I'm a film producer. I'm I studied film production at a film school, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, so in, in film history lessons, we learned that the the switch from um, analog filmmaking to digital filmmaking democrat dem, democrat democratize <laughs> filmmaking as a whole as, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a as a as a category of art. So as a, as a art category, mm -hmm. and I think that's beautiful because many many more people. And so th there were no no gatekeepers anymore. So you 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 just could get grab a DSLR or or anything and just start shooting a film, right? And you could be um you, or you can be creative um like uh, there are endless possibilities. And even now with our smartphones, the cameras are uh, some cameras of the smartphones are better than uh, professional cameras, and everyone co can go out there and shoot the next blockbuster Hollywood movie but the question is are people doing that no they're not so the filmmakers are still do doing that and I think um, something similar will happen here where um, we do have access to these creative tools uh, to generate text music um, films and, um, and and storyboards images uh, but um, the, the art is not to um, I think the art is so the idea is the art some in a, in some sense. Mm -hmm. So if you have the idea and can can produce it using these tools, then um, I think it's a perfect combination of both worlds. Yeah, I totally agree. Like you brought up a good point of you know it used to be there used to be gatekeepers like this is how we film with filmmakers. It was like you need a film camera with film stock, and then like a great example is when smartphones were introduced right you had all these kids like like who wanted to do stop motion and now they could and they're using like lego so it was anything they had in their rooms and then like they make these some of them like some of those lego videos are really really good <laughs> and like now they're using them in like commercials for everything like now there's an even whole animation style where it's like all right it's lego pieces and we're gonna move them around like this like they made how many of those lego movies that are ne technically they're 3d but they're in the style of like these little kids going like doo -doo 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 -doo. so it's like Without that, like well, without these technological innovations, you wouldn't have new styles or new ways of doing things. So I think you're, yeah, you are correct. I don't like, I don't think art is gonna go away. I just think it's just gonna change and innovate in different fashions, in my opinion. But uh, yeah. So as we wrap up, is there anything you want to tell the phantom listeners out there, artists, 
Did we, anything we missed or anything you want to say? So um, I, I, maybe maybe a small personal thing, but sure. I, I just want to add this. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I I, I, I actually um, read this um, cartoon brew was the page, I yep. think, the, the article. I read it as well. And I think it's a very detailed, nice article um, about the capabilities of AI, etc. And then I scrolled down on this page and went into the, <laughs> the comment the... section. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I wish I hadn't done this <laughs> because <laughs> because um, it's really um, so myself as a developer working in a film production company with the goal to be to to um, to be able to um, yeah make our own craft sort of craft of filmmaking uh, so we can do this better. Um, and the, like I said, the idea for story about the AI emerged from from this because we don't have the budget to um, for each commercial to do some storyboards, but we at the same time we want to be as creative as possible for our own clients and for our own work and for our own artistic voices. And um, so uh, I was thinking about story about the AI this way, and still am, and I'm um, and I'm. Um, so this is my this is my belief in in in, in AI and especially in storyboard AI, and um, to be able or to, um, to 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 make it possible for other filmmakers as well, for, especially for freelancers who can't draw, don't have the budget for any uh, project they do, um, to do storyboards. And then I go into the comment sections on this article, and it's like. Yeah, two tech bros are um, I don't know a company from Germany. They're they're just they want to take away our jobs and um, they're destroying everything. And we could boycott them, etc. And I was like, oh no, yeah, what have <laughs> they, I done? They, 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 yeah, <laughs> they got it completely wrong. So this was this was never our intention to take away any jobs or anything. So like I said, we do have actually we do have um, in our company we do have um, storyboard artists. Um, who are working um, for us and with us, uh, who are doing beautiful work um, on on storyboards, which we um, which we also need for our project because we know if we need some customized um, and 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 uh, yeah some kind of perfect storyboards, we we just ask them. We don't ask the AI. And um, so I appreciate all the work from all storyboarders around the world. But and this was never our intention to take away any jobs and this is also not what a story about the AI is used for right now so it's more like for projects who can't afford a storyboard artists these people are using a storyboarder sure for other tools. yeah, yeah. hear that it's not coming after your jobs <laughs> it's a tool exactly. right it's just a, it's a tool set to allow people that don't have the skills to make art make projects Versus, you know, oh, we're just gonna destroy the industry. No more. Yeah. All right. Yeah, actually, we, we have we have some storyboard artists as customers who are using the tool to um, gen generate the the canvas of uh, for for their ideas in a quick way, and then just download the the plain images from from our tool, and then just put them into Photoshop or anything to edit them with their own styles and, and add st some stuff, etc. So um, I think they are pretty happy too. So. Maybe some storyboard artists will give it a try as well. So if we, if if people wanted to check out Storyboard AI, where would they go to? Yeah, basically Storyboard, storyboard AI. AI. Okay, perfect. So <laughs> itself. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Perfect. Thanks, Z, for talking to me today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, that's it. I want to thank our guests for contributing on our journey so far, and I want to thank you, the phantom listeners, for hearing us ramble around the water cooler. Come check in next time as we talk more about the subject of AI in the animation industry. Let's find out together. Don't forget, keep your eyes on the horizon. Goodbye. Aborting transmission.